Relieving that gives you immediate pleasure, whether it's television, drinking, laying down, sleeping on your phone. So all these things um, are wants that are immediately in front of us mm -hmm. that pre prevent us from getting to, like you said earlier, be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing. We want to welcome you guys to episode number seven of the DNA of Greatness. I am your host, Aquarius Wave, and this is my uncle, closer than blood, the man worthy of this hour, Coach Bobby Bluford. Say what's, what's up, up guys? Did you say episode seven? It's crazy. I know. Episode seven? Wow. Seven. I love, it. I, love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. We're getting into it today, guys. As always, I'm humbly... Uh, pleased to be with you guys, mm -hmm. hopeful and, and excited to share with you guys some insight to help your day, your life be better than it was yesterday. Absolutely. So that being said, today's subject is one, and I say this all the time, but I mean yeah. it every single time. Every time. And this one is so relevant to your life at this very moment in time. I don't care where you are in your experience. I don't care if you think you're just average or you think you're destined for greatness. If you're somebody who's just tuning in, this message is one that you absolutely need to hear and need to internalize and take with you on this journey of life. That is, why do we eat? Now, I'm gonna give a little backlog, little backstory as far as why this subject came up for me. Now. Last week's episode, which was Unleashing the Beast Within, Coach brought up this analogy, which he's going to do for us today, hopefully. Or actually, no, it's a reality of why a beast eats as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, why the non-beast eats or why the everyday person eats. Now, that was one aspect, but something that even caught my attention beyond that was in episode one, you guys make sure to listen to that one. It is Burning the Boats. During that episode, Unc, you said... You said you're it, you're not overweight because of what you eat. You're overweight because of why you eat, right? Mm -hmm. And that Definitely. was like a moment. I, I remember I, I edited it into the beginning of the podcast because I was like, that's a bar, bar. right? <laughs> that was so on point, And it was something that just rang internally for me, even though it was a concept I already knew logically. For mm -hmm. some reason at that moment, it really quantified. I was like, man, no, you're right. And so I started thinking even deeper and I said, that's the, the reason why, you know, I'm not where I want to be in this area of life, right? Not just body, but, you know, okay, mindset, relationship, spirit, uh, career. Why am I not doing the things that I know I should be doing or doing the very opposite, doing things against me? And I said, well, it's not because, you know, I don't know the steps. It's not because, you know, we don't know that, you know, two plus two equals four, but it's because there are reasons why we're making two and three try to equal four right right and so right. i really wanted to take this deep dive today into why is it that we do those things that we say we don't want to do you know expecting the results that we want out of life and starting right. with you know the body the physiology i think would be the best place to to kind of um, bring this home for people why yeah, do so, we eat yeah so i'll recap what we talked about uh really quickly so Mm. The the scenario I painted was if you are a tiger or a bear, a lion, all these all these great um hunting animals mm. that we admire as human beings. And I I told the story and painted the picture that we are we are just like we, we are an animal. Mm. Right? We are we we're, we're a very um advanced in the brain animal. But an animal, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So when you when you strip away the natural environment of a of a predatory cat, lion, tiger, panther, and put them in a domesticated situation, all their instincts of living go away, all of them, right? And and what you look at if you're going to a zoo versus what you see when you go into the jungle is a different animal. Mm -hmm. Right, the animal in, in the in the jungle is acute, is observant, is lean, is strong, mm -hmm. is quick, is react can react to things quickly. Mm -hmm. The one in the zoo is not like that. It's lazy. 
It walks around. It's not as as quick to fire on you um, or, or, or be aggressive because that's been removed from its natural nature. Mm. So as a human being, once you understand that we are the same, it allows you to, to, to view differently how you eat, how you act, how you move. And, and the scenario was that there were three steps to eating like a beast. And I said in, in the podcast uh, that my whole fitness level went to a different level when I understood this. And it came to me. One day I was just sitting there and it came to me because I, I've always trained like a beast. And everyone mm -hmm. on, on social media, everyone in marketing uh, toward fitness goals, they love to to uh, dramatize the fitness part. Yeah. You, see, you know, see commercials, guys running and girls flipping tires. So most of us uh, who are into fitness at any medium to high level, we're all beasts when it comes to training. Mm. Like we understand that you got to get after it in the weight room, on the mm. track, on the football field, the basketball court, whatever it is. But when we view eating and dieting, we always viewed it as a restrictive measure, mm. right? Even even diets like the carnivore diet, which I, I, I use, or keto diet, which I also use, you know, and I, I made it my own, but I, I'll get into that. But even in those diets where you're saying, okay, I, I can only eat these things, or, or I can only eat in these windows or intermittent fasting, it's always viewed from a restrictive standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because you're going from something and removing things. Either either hours of the day where you eat, items of food you eat, whatever it is, yeah. restrictive. Whereas the, 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 the training part, normally you're adding to it. Mm. I'm going to do more sprints, I'm going to do more lifts, and I'm going to do more running, whatever it is. So the restrictive nature is what most of us view the diet part of training and fitness from. Well, I, I, I kind of saw it differently, right? And so I saw it from the perspective of what are we meant to do as animals? Number one, all animals have to eat, sorry, have to hunt before they eat. Right. All animals do. Like, yeah. unless, you're, unless you're a domesticated animal in a zoo, which I've already said is not who we want to be, right? we, we, we want to be the strong, viral, um, uh, quick, react, reactionary animals that we are. Absolutely. So because of that, we have to hunt before we eat. Mm. Right? Cats have to hunt before they eat. Bears have to hunt before they eat. Sharks have to hunt before they eat. Mm. Number two, I said, is that we only kill what we need, mm. right? If we're going to be in fit. So all animals who want to be, who, who are in the wild, a tiger, a, 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 you know, a, a whatever it is, a shark, an eagle, they, they fly, they, they, they sprint, they hunt. They only kill what they need. Hmm. They don't kill extra, right? They, they, they don't. No leftovers. For many reasons, right? Well, I won't yep. get into all of them again, but for many reasons. They're naturally inclined to only hunt when they're hungry, only kill what they need. And the last part is they don't eat extra. Yeah. When they're full, when their brain tells their body they have enough to suffice for now and for the foreseeable future, they leave the carcass. Mm. They don't continue eating unless they're bringing food to their baby cubs. Right? So we don't do any of that as human beings. Yeah. Right, so the answer then is why do we not do the things that that we like all animals would naturally do, mm. right? Farmers, right? They still are closer to that than we are. Yeah, like they don't, they don't, they don't eat five times a day. They don't, they don't shop for extra. They don't, they don't, you know, grow extra. They don't, they don't do extra, mm. right? So the answer, the question is why, and the why is sociology. And psychology. Mm -hmm. I've always said we study the wrong sciences when it comes to fitness. We study yeah. anatomy, biology, chemistry, physiology, kinesiology. But the real culprit to why we're not getting to where we want to get to is sociology, who you're hanging out with, mm. what environments do you put yourself, yourself into that make your, your goals less achievable. Yeah your fitness goals, and then psychology. What are you feeding your brain? And we'll get into that. What are you feeding your brain and your spirit in between workouts that's making the workouts and the eating sessions less efficient? And that's the key. 
it's it's, so it's sociology and psychology and most people don't do any work in those two sciences as it relates to their to their fitness goals so they don't end up being fit or healthy yeah. or either so um the place i want to start with this is really um i guess taking us down the journey of your quote unquote average individual right Mm -hmm. And then taking us through this journey of then becoming the one who lives in complete alignment with what we say or what we intend that we truly want to be, right? Mm -hmm. And again, still playing off of physiology because this is one that every single one of us can relate to. There's not yeah. a single person, and you're one of the, the, the individuals who introduced me to this truth, which is there's not one person who does not want to be fit. Yeah. And actually, you might have been the first one who just said it straight up, you yeah. know, no BS. It's like, I, I don't care what anybody tells you, you know. The person who says that they're the most confident, even though they got the belly and whatever going on, right? Yeah. Uh, the man boobs and said, I don't care. That individual also wants to be fit. Of course. You know, just as much as the person who might of have course, just yeah. a little extra on the side or whatever it may be. Every yeah. single one of us at some level. And so being at that place, I want to start off with justifications, right? Mm -hmm. Before we even get into psychology, why is it that you believe that we justify our actions, our current actions that are not working, as Einstein said, you know, repeating the same thing and expecting a different result. That madness, yeah. in essence. Yeah. Why do we continue to stay in the state of madness, repeating these things that do not work and justifying them as opposed to actually taking the necessary steps that sometimes might actually be simpler on paper? Right. Well, there's two reasons, right? Well, two major mm -hmm. reasons. I just, again, guys, I take notes. Yeah, absolutely. Like give you give you guys whatever comes to me, right? So the two that I think are most prevalent is we have competing wants mm. and desires, right? So, so this weekend, yes, this weekend and yesterday was the Fourth of July <laughs> day event, right? And, and last Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, and today Actually, Friday. Sorry, <laughs> for many people who had Monday off, it started Friday. Friday, right. Saturday, right. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. A five-day event for a 4th of July holiday. Oh, wait. Oh, now they got leftovers. Remember? They got oh, leftovers yeah. today. today. Exactly. For, for a five-day event for a one-day holiday, which is made up. <laughs> and so I did a video on Friday about, about you know, made-up holidays and made-up weekends. And, and the idea was that we need to, to begin to put rewards behind something that's going toward our dream. Mm. Right, so I won't get into that. Go to my social media platform to find that find that video. But the point is, is that we have these these immediate pleasures, right? That that are in front of us every single day. It might be a, mm -hmm. a it might be sexual, it might be a, a urge that you see in a boy or a girl. It might be uh, gluttony in, in the form of of drinking or eating. It might be rest in terms of sitting down. It might be you know, uh, uh, relief from stress, which is in that stress is not bad. You stress EU can help you understand what your environment needs to be needs to be in order to grow. So stress in and of itself is wired into our DNA, but we we obviously as a, as a world have gone beyond. So relieving that gives you immediate pleasure, whether it's television, drinking, lay, laying down, sleeping on your phone. So all these things. Uh, are wants that are immediately in front of us mm. that pre prevent us from getting to, like you said earlier, a want that all of us want yeah. and have. All of us, no one wants to be overweight. Nobody. Yeah. Right? Especially now. Now, maybe you could argue that two or three hundred years ago, people were okay being big. Right? That's because they didn't consider it big. Correct. <laughs> but once we defined it as being big, nobody wants to be big. Absolutely. Nobody. Nobody wants for, to be a deviation from the average. Once it was defined, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying the definition we have of fit is right or wrong. But once it was defined, nobody purposely wants to be outside of that definition. Absolutely. Right? So, okay. let, so let's, let's state that we all want that at some mm -hmm. level. Some higher than others. I get it. But because... There are many wants in between here and there. And the further away you are from there, the more wants are between here and there that get in the way. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, right, we have the ability as a human race 
to have constructed this world where we have li literally endless ways to show our currency. Mm. Right? So money, status, accomplishments, mm -hmm. uh, you know, other features on your body that, that are not health related or body related, like your face. The things that uh, you do, you know, you can you do if, if, if the, the, the greatest hippie, the most altruistic giver. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So all those things, right, give us the ability to circumvent or replace that want with a want that's easier. For wow. Us. Not easier in general. I'm not saying yeah. like being a, a philanthropist is easy or being a millionaire is easy or getting a Lambo is easy. Or I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is for that person, in that context, that currency is easier, and it still gives them what they want in terms of jo enjoyment. So mm -hmm. if I'm an NBA player, I don't want to be fat, yeah, or, or out of out of shape. But if I have enough money to where women still come up to me, yeah, I can overcome that other want. Wow. So in terms of 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 sociology and psychology and physiology, all, all the sciences, it boils down to, in many cases, the competing wants mm. and then the currency that we use in our moments of, of, of question or despair, um, we, can, we can justify not having this currency that we still want mm. because I got money mm. or I'm an NBA star, or, but I'm pretty. Or I, or I give money back to all these things, or I built a company, or whatever it is. We, we're able to, in the moment, in the moment, justify it. But that person, I would argue, still goes home to himself at some point in the shower, in the bathroom, and they still feel some angst Yeah. when they see themselves. No matter yeah. how much money you have, because at the end of the day, we still want to be, our brains still want to be, are still wired to want to be attractive to the other mates. Yeah. And because we've defined attractiveness a certain way in this new world we live in, that's how we react to ourselves when we see that. There's This is so powerful. Again, I knew you were going to come with, with the entire textbook during this one today. Like, you're going to be teaching, teaching. And, you know, sometimes it's a pre preaching message. Sometimes it's a teaching message, right? right. And today I feel like is a, a beautiful place to do both because there is an inspirational and aspirational aspect. But... Also, I, I wanted to get into nitty gritty of stuff. And the first thing that came into my mind, because I never have gotten your opinion on this. Okay. And the reason I ask is because though like, you know, the world, y'all see Coach Bobby, y'all see how he's built, right? And he came from being the skinny kid and he's lived like this for the last decades of his life. Decades, decades. plural. Yeah. Yeah. Plural as choice. Yeah. And, but you're also somebody who... Even though you are this, you still relate to the quote unquote common man and common woman, right? Like you've never been somebody who's for the bodybuilders. Like you're right. for the soccer mom, you're for right. the kid in the penitentiary, you're for like you're for everybody, right? right? And so you have a different level of also understanding and empathy for an individual who might be going through a situation that somebody who's strictly a bodybuilder would not understand right. or would not be able to relate to even, right? Maybe right. they get it internally and they want to resonate, but you have an ability to do that. And so I, I bring this up, and I guess this is a little bit of sugarcoating, to bring up the topic of the fat acceptance movement. Yeah. Now, have yeah. you heard of this? I, I don't I haven't know. heard of it, but I mean, it's, it, I mean, oh. okay, so I'm gonna... that you said that, right? <laughs> okay. okay, beautiful. So um, yeah. I'm going to give a little back uh, backstory to this. And again, this is a little more of a uh, dynamic episode and honest. And I want to take things this direction. Yeah. If it gets yeah. demonetized, that's okay. We're talking about it. It's real stuff that's going yeah. on. Yeah. So in essence, there has been the spawning um, of a social movement per se, uh, social media specifically, um, where individuals have basically um, taken back their power over their weight, obesity, et cetera, right? And the way this has been done is by, instead of moving towards, you know, a healthier lifestyle is the acceptance of, you know, basically bodies at all sizes, more right. specifically overweight. Now, right. it started in what seemed like a kind of, I guess you would say a more optimistic, more positive spin where it was, you know, uh, appreciate or, you know, find worth in yourself regardless of how you look. Mm -hmm. But then, as all things do, it started to morph into this kind of hatred and 
resentment, they wouldn't call it resentment. They would just call it logic and find different ways to justify it. But in essence, it's like now going to the gym has become fat phobia, right? Yeah. And again, these yeah. are mass kind of ideas that are being pushed within yeah. these movements, right? If you're an individual who wants to be skinnier, um, it's because you have an internalized self-hatred. Like <laughs> right. these, these right. and this is a very real thing, right? right? And people who are influencers in the space are passing away from, you know, their illness, which is really what obesity is, if yes. we really want yes. to get down to it, right? Because there is such a deep justification of wanting to stay where I am because it is easier. And so I wanted to get your opinion and I don't know which way this is going to go, but yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm curious to see where your mindset is at because you approach this different. Like some people get at it and they fire off on these people. Yeah. And I think that yeah. does less good than it does justice in the long term. Yeah, 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 yeah. It no, might I know, be funny. I know. That, I, what's cool, viewers, what's cool about our podcast is that we... We, yes, we think similarly in a lot of ways, mm. right? But we're also different. I'm older than, yeah. than Neff. Um, you know, we he's further along in, the, in his spiritual growth than I am. Um, and we have different backgrounds, mm. right? But what's beautiful about it is that we, you know, we don't know where we're going. And we're, and we're okay with that, right? Yeah. So, and I think what's beautiful about, about my background and stutterer skinny black kid in, in a predominantly white uh, environments um trying to find myself um cfo and finance you know went to uc davis and santa clara whatever all the back background that make my my journey unique right married a salvadorian woman have two biracial children both teenagers um mom was my, my mom was over 200 high 200s at some point died at 56 which I'll be in five years. Um, dad was super skinny from the inner city. So uh, again, my perspective is is broad. Yeah. Right. So I actually heard you guys or watched your podcast on Healer Healer Podcast where this came up. Mm. And and so the good point I want you know that 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 um, Maha made uh, that I I'll, I'll reiterate because I thought about it and I was like yes that that's completely true. And my daughter and I had a discussion about it. Mm. Um, was I actually noticed that about about a year or two ago mm -hmm. I was going through maybe it was Target and then I was going through Kohl's and then I passed by Victoria's Secrets in the mall and I was like are they showing more big models mm. than usual to my daughter because she yeah. my daughter for those who don't know is swole <laughs> for real <laughs> yeah. like she does she loves doing this daddy right at some point I'm a my, I still look pretty good doing this, but at some point I'm gonna be behind her. You won't be to see me anymore. No, <laughs> um, legs for sure. Um, but she grew up chubby. Mm. And she grew up chubby. Like she has the DNA of maybe her grandma. My, my mom was was a bigger lady. And I never forced fitness on her ever. Mm. And my son is like me. He's skinny, and I make him eat. So he doesn't do any fasting. He doesn't do any you know keto stuff that we do. Um, and I remember, like, feeling a certain way when she was, you know, getting into her, into her early teenage years, like 11, 12, you know, when 13, when she was still, like, chubby. I was like, man, I want her to be, I didn't want her to be disliked or teased. Yeah. I didn't care how big she got. From a health point, I did, health standpoint, I did. Yeah. But I cared more about so social acceptance of big girls, especially big black girls. Mm. So I remember thinking that, but I remember never wanting to make her feel like she was inadequate or less than. So I didn't shame her. I didn't. I didn't do any of that. But I remember telling her, like she didn't play sports. Like like now now she's mad. She didn't run track because her legs are built for track. She built um, for every sport to exactly dominate. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, but she she danced. She dances still. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling her after a recital that she had because there was a few girls in other groups is all day long recital like seven eight years ago and one of the groups or individuals one of the groups had a had a had a dancer who was larger mm. she was really really good but she was larger and i remember telling my daughter that um i'm as understanding 
as most, mm. if any, when it comes to, you know, body sizes and shapes. I'm a trainer. I'm a, I'm a coach. And I said, but even I don't know how good a dancer she was. Mm. Right? Because all I could, could see was, oh, my gosh, she, you know, she's, she's big, but look how limber she is. So mm. I don't know if I would have contextualized it the same way if she was a small person. Yeah. So I said, I said, Mama, I, you know, I called her Mama. I said, I'm, I don't care how big you get. My, my mom, the, 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 the foremost important woman in my life, your, your nana, yeah. your grandma was as big as they get. Mm -hmm. So my, my idea of beauty is framed by that. Yeah. So I don't care how big you get, but I know you care about dance, and I would hate for somebody to not know how good a dancer you are because of how big you are. Wow. And that in part, and then the next summer she spent with me, you know, training training schools, training teams, and she just caught the fitness bug. Yeah. I and remember now, that summer. I can't, I can't make her stop, dude. She is, yeah, she's I ridiculous. remember that summer like it was yesterday. Remember that summer? Yeah, that was the same yeah. summer that you and I were together all summer, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so my viewpoint is from there. But I will say this. Maha was right. If we're to think that that these big companies yeah. are so altruistic that they just love, have a love for large people now is mm -hmm. naive. Yeah. Like they see a market yep. that they can target. So they're going to target it. Correct. So now Under Armour and Nike, all these, all these, all these companies are businesses. So I'm not, I'm not shaming, I'm not shaming them either. Yeah. But if, if they can target an audience, they're going to do so. They're going to do so. Yeah. But, but it's not because necessarily because it's altruistic. It's bottom line. It's monetistic. Correct. Right? Um, and then, so the other side of it, all right? So, are we doing people a favor if we remove the pain of being different? Mm. And I would argue... That's a discussion right there. In many ways that we're not. Yeah. Right? One of my go-to sayings to people, one of my go-to phrases is that part of why I'm fit still is I've made a commitment to take my shirt off in every workout. Yeah. And people say, oh, I mean, yeah, my, my, my boys in my class, you know who they are. I love them. But they give me a hard time to this day. Oh, and now this shirt's coming off. <laughs> but if I were ever to stop doing that and be okay stop doing that, do you think I would still be fit, as mm. fit as I am? I would argue no. The fact that I have to unveil myself and deal with whatever discomfort it is. Yeah. Makes me fitter. Right? When we remove pain that's meant to keep us in a certain lane, our lane of what we allow widens. Mm. Ooh, I thought that's of that so one, good. dog. Nah, this is all I of this. I thought of that one, dude. Nah, you're pretty. I'm like, I'm but all if you in. Remove right now. that, right? What we allow widens. If you remove bumpers in a bowling alley, my need to shoot straight is removed, right? So, so Bars. do we want to criticize people who are trying and make wealth or fitness or, or high academia to make that the standard in and of itself? No. Mm. But we also don't want to make being poor and being dumb and being unhealthily overweight the standard either. Yeah. So, so in order to do that, there has to be some discomfort mm. in not being that, right? If my kid never feels like a worse student at C than the A student, why would he want to get an A? Absolutely. There's no one. If I never felt, I was ashamed. We, should, we shouldn't give the kids who, are, who, who made 4.0s, we shouldn't acknowledge them separately. Why not? Mm. If I'm a, a D student... And I'm not acknowledged differently than the A student. Why would I want to get an A? Mm. Right? It makes, so so we've gone too far in this, right? The whole like yeah. everyone gets a trophy. Yeah. You know, all these things. It's like we've gone too far because now, now we are we are not not shaming. We're not shaming, yes. But we're also not rewarding people. Right? So if everyone can get a billboard. Then the billboard. Why would I want to? Why would I want to be on a billboard? Yeah, 
It means nothing at this point. It means nothing. Yeah. And so, uh, to prove uh, to prove this point, by the way, there's a story, um, a case study that was done with this young protege. She was a pianist, a pianist or whatever you may call it. And at the age of like seven, eight, she was performing at like the 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 town hall level, right? And so she's in this class with all these other young players or aspiring players, and she's just killing it, right? She's doing her thing. And at the end of her performance, basically the, the parents tell the kids not to really clap. And they incentivize them not to clap. Then one of the other kids plays, and all they can play is chopsticks, so they're playing dun, yeah. Dun, yeah, dun, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And by the end of her performance, everybody's going nuts. Yeah. Right? And so you think to yourself, why is it that people are actually even disincentivized, yes, but afraid to aspire towards greatness? Yeah. It's because greatness has now become disincentivized. Yeah. If you're too good, you're told yeah. to humble yourself. Right. Right? But right. if you're medium, average, or even, uh, God forbid, somebody who has zero capability right. or zero competency, you are now given the highest reward. So they basically tracked these individuals and saw that, again, these protégés who are being treated in this way are actually becoming worse and worse over time, which yeah, is why there's this like, curse of the protégé. It's, 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 sci it's, it's science. It's how the world is designed. Absolutely. Right? It's how the world is designed. If it's you by move, and, and, and that's why... My video was about when I was talking about holidays being being made up, and I, I didn't mean like they're made up holidays. I mean the holiday itself has some validity, but we've created this whole construct around it that is all fake. Yeah, and now we're we're celebrating something that is not ours. Many times, like we didn't down the cross. I mean, why am I, why am I eating a whole pound cake for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you know, for like, nobody's freedom. Yeah, hey, mine. Yeah, yeah. For, for the July, right? Okay, I get it. I mean, I, I, it's our freedom. But do you do you celebrate the whole year? How free you are? Do you ever do you ever sit down and write gratitude about being in a country that gives you endless options? Uh -oh. No, you don't. In fact, I, I would argue that you've done less of that this year, less than the, the number of beers you drank on Fourth of July, right? So. But the, but the but the point is, is that now, if you look at how we're naturally structured away, so a rat mm -hmm. is going to work his butt off in a maze, right, to get the cheese. Yeah. And once he and once he knows the cheese is there, he will be more efficient mm -hmm. in his in his maze function. That's, that's a proof. Look it up. That's not me making it up. Absolutely. They become more efficient, Absolutely. and they know at the end of this journey some cheese. Yeah. So. The, all these things are naturally wired into into life behavior. Yeah. Not just human behavior. The world's behavior is 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 structured that way. Mm -hmm. So when you change that, right, you are you are messing with how we're wired. Correct. So we're wired to get rewards mm -hmm. in our life. Or avoid you know, accolades, opposite sex, procreation, food. Uh, so we've created new things that are fake, yep. right? But our brain thinks they're real. Mm -hmm. So to us, it's real. So getting a, an applause at the end of, of a performance is our new food or our new procreation. Our, our brain's wired. So if we remove what's in front of that or remove or, or remove or minimize the reward and dopamine release, then we're not going to get the same production. Mm. You know, the reason that the United States is where it is, is that people are incentivized to be wealthy as hell. Absolutely. Like, like, like beyond wealthy. Mm -hmm. Right. So because of that, they'll stay on the course. Right. For if you're a golfer, they'll stay on the track. If you're a runner, right? they'll stay in the lab. If you're a scientist or engineer, they'll stay at the office, you know, for 80, 90 hours. If you're a startup company, if you know that the reward, but remove that reward. Right, which is the same in that case as as the applause is for the twelve year old, then the whole the whole drive that we have is removed. So this episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one day or multiple day format, the symposiums provide an all inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically 
mentally and emotionally. Now back to the show. It, it's it's a conundrum to say the least because a conundrum, yeah. Because when you artificially <laughs> remove those rewards, right? So you tell the person that healthy at any size is real. That you know, again, accept where you are, and in fact, be proud of where you are. Therefore, stay where you are. So you're more incentivized now to stay exactly where you are in this place yeah. of. You know, yeah. healthiness. The crazy thing, and it's just, Unc, it's just so wild, it's just so crazy, is that your body doesn't give a damn. No, so, it's, I'm, I'm it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we change. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we change the input or the output. Right. It doesn't matter what incentives we create as opposed right. to the disincentivizations, what new pain points we create as opposed to logic will never stop being logic. Truth will never stop being truth. The body is yeah. going to reject some things and yeah. it's going to accept some things. And I think that's the beauty about physiology is one of the simplest and most direct aspects of ourselves that we cannot lie about. And I think that's also why there's like a reverence and also an envy yeah. when it comes to people's yeah. bodies more than yeah. anything else, even more than money I've recognized, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when somebody is you know built a certain way, people will automatically have some sort of assumption about you if they're not in that same mold, but yet they can't stop looking at you. Yeah. Whereas even if you drive the Lambo, some people may look at you for a while and then their eyes are gone. Yeah. But something about the physiology, and again, it's because you know that there had to be certain inputs and outputs in order for you to get that result. Right. Right. There was no. That's why we look at you know fake body parts strangely because yeah, that yeah, part yeah. of the brain knows that this yeah. is off. But if it's real, and when we register that it's real, we can't keep our eyes off of it. Because right. we know that this took an individual having a certain level of self-control or discipline of the mind to get to that result, period. Right. right. And so I wanted then to take a, a dive into that as like, though we're finding ourselves at this place where we are disincentivizing individuals, at least at the, at the subconscious level, to not do certain things or not have to, right? The body is also not going to lie to you. Right. Right. Yeah. So there's two, speak there's two things there. Right. Number one. Um, and I always say that that's one of my go to sayings is that is that your body doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I know it's the fourth of July. Your body, your fat cells don't give a damn. It's fourth of July. No. Nope. Right. Your body is your body's designed. And we'll get into this on a different call or different different uh, episode. But your body is your body is designed to store fat and burn fat in specific internal environments. Yeah. Right? So your body will only burn fat when it has no glucose and glycogen in it. Period. I don't care what the damn meter says at Orange Theory. Wait, but it's not calories? But, but, uh, but I've been tracking my calories. Though. It's not yeah, calories. Yeah, not I would say that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, I, mean, and now, and I, I love to like back it with like... <laughs> I love science, but I love I love the first level. I love to back it with like some just a an anecdote or 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 phrase or story or line that brings it back to earth. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ones I say about the the heart monitor, I'm in fat burning mode according to my watch. According, I said, really, you had a donut. So I, got, I have a donut, <laughs> right, here. I have a donut right, right now. But uh, if, I, if I move at the pace and keep my heart rate in the fat burning zone. <laughs> You're telling me that my, my body is going to skip the donut <laughs> and go right to my fat. Is that what you're telling me? Well, no, but then, then, what, what, then what does this mean? <laughs> right? It makes no sense, right? So the point is that so we, <laughs> so we got to understand how, how, how the body works, right? Now, my, my conundrum or my, or my dilemma with the movement of 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 shame versus acceptance mm. in the fitness realm is I I've always viewed it as you know process right people say process and, and I mean it right so I view it as as I look at somebody and respect what got them there mm. like another go to coach Bobby saying and you you put it out in 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 my, our song. Which we got, we got to include that song. Oh, no, we got to make that like, theme. Download, download okay. the song, right? You got to make that um, theme. But hey, I'm not proud of what, how I look. And I am, but I say that. I'm proud of what it took. Mm. Right? I'm not proud of how I look. I'm proud of what it took to get here. So when I see people who are in shape, and I understand how what it takes, 
I, I give them respect. Yeah. Right? So part of why, and, and they have a confidence that's in large part due to knowing internally what they've gone through to get that. Absolutely. I, I always tell my football team, I said, look, man, when we play a game, I don't care who it's against, right? We will walk on the field differently than most. Not because we have a great quarterback or great running back or great, because I promise you, we have done more to get here than anybody we play against. Yeah. Right? Because I'm your trainer. I'm your coach, right? So I make sure that we fight, we face stuff in our workouts mentally, physically, spiritually that most teams don't face. Mm. And it gives you a confidence that you can't fake. Yeah. Right? So if we are to remove the need to do that part to get fit, that's the big disservice we're doing people. Hmm. Is the confidence she will have or he will have knowing that he or she is able to come through some stuff. Yeah. Right? Me telling you you look good won't change that. Absolutely. It won't Number make one, you it won't change that. Because you still know how you look. Absolutely. It will and not more importantly, you know about. how lazy you've been. Correct. Right? To get to how you look. Correct. Like we get to a certain level of obesity. And I get it. Some people are born bigger, some some born smaller, some have medical stuff going. I get it, right? But wherever you're at, you can do things to circumvent that. Mm. You can do things to change course. Mm. You can eat better. Yeah. You can move however limited you can move. But there are people who have no freaking legs, who have ripped abs. Absolutely. There are fools with no arms who have who have bodybuilder legs. Mm. But there are people with muscular dystrophy and, 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 and Down syndrome who have muscles out, out the wing wing. So it's not so it's not that. It's about it's about doing what you can in your capacity and whatever that is will give you confidence. Now mm. that person I don't mind being on a billboard. Absolutely. I don't mind seeing a big a, a big person who's 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 working out and eating right and living healthy and being confident and doing what they can because they because they know and I know that they're still getting to where they want to get to. Absolutely. Given where they came from. Absolutely. Right, my wife, my wife Maria, Auntie Maria like when when our kids were small, like maybe like six and four, I remember to this day she was like, you know, getting dressed and she was like lamenting and upset by how she looked, and she was like, "Don't you, when you see this, don't you get turned off?" Mm. And I was like, "No." She was like, "Why? Why? Why? No, why? Sorry. Why?" I Come said, right. "I put a picture of all my kids." I said, "Because wow. this is why you this way. Wow. This is why you like that. If not, if if it was because you lazy." That's different. <laughs> and eating donuts, that's different. And she still works out. She still trains. And, I, and we're both in our 50s now, so mm. the weight doesn't come off as easy for her. But I don't, but, but again, I see what you're going through. Mm. Right? I see, and even with her, her confidence wanes, as is mine, because we still, even with that, we still fight against so, you know, society's vision of what we should be. And yeah. to your point, it's like the body don't care. Also, your available options to date and be confident don't care. Correct. So, so, so this community might be accepting of of you, of how you look, but that job interviewer might not yeah. be. That guy you want, or girl you want to date might not be. Correct. So, so again, you know, there's no right answer. All we can do is debate it and see both sides. Mm -hmm. But to act to act like you understand, not you, but but any of us understand like with hard line what it should be is to me is idiotic and naive and, and not fair because it is nuanced. Mm. Right? And there are there are arguments on both sides, but because of that, we should all be discussing like, you know, the pros and cons of both ways. Mm. You know, and not just say, well, you know, like, like you said, not just have this one movement where they're all like, accept everybody because that, that doesn't work. This has been a brilliant, brilliant take. I love it. And the last little thing I even wanted to um, kind of piggyback off of what you said is <laughs> there's an internal voice, an internal aspect. And this is going to be our segue into psychology. There is a part of ourselves that recognizes everything that we do and don't do that's in or out of alignment with who we say we are, right? So it's called integrity. Yes. And either you have it or 
you essentially don't, right? There's a spectrum, sure. But it's, you know, that level of trust of self. Am I keeping my own promises? And so it's funny because you brought up this example of somebody telling you, oh, you look beautiful, you look whatever. Y you have, you know, like for my experience, women who are beautiful in almost anybody's standards, right? If you dropped them off in any place in the world, they will be considered beautiful. And yet you can tell them they're beautiful and they will not believe you. Right. Because of their self-image. Right. Their own belief and their own concept about who they are. Right. Is the thing stopping them. And so to even not acknowledge or, or kind of almost deny that aspect of ourselves does the most damage, I believe, even more so than, you know, the physical aspects. Yeah. Because if I am going around saying I love myself, I accept myself, but truly the narrative I'm telling myself is I hate myself and I can never change. Because right. most people who start to celebrate something that is actually destructive, it's because of giving up. Yes. yes. Right? They believe that they cannot get the outcome that they truly desired of life. But that internal dialogue, whether it's suppressed and subconscious and automated or they're, you know, it's, it's visible to them in their everyday thought process and they're highly aware of it and highly, um, I guess, critical of self, there is still going to be a level of self-destructiveness that comes from that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big advocate on self-love, but I realized that I needed to make more nuanced or at least deeper dives into what self-love is because some of us have started to adopt this belief that self-love is just acceptance of everything. Mm -hmm. When in reality, I believe that self-love like produce a certain fruit. So if you truly love yourself, which is wishing the highest regard for yourself, you will do things that are in alignment with your highest good, right? right. It's like I say I love yes. you know my child, so I love this baby. That means I wish the highest good and I am willing to do things in alignment with the highest good, right? Yes. So I'm not going to stuff something in this child's mouth that's going to lead them to dis-ease. Yeah. Right? That's what love right. does. It says, what is the best thing that I could feed to this child for them to thrive? That's what love does. Right. It's an operator. Even if and when they're crying for it. Correct. Right. Exactly. Correct. Even if they're willing to fight you, yes. you know, yes. in preservation of that thing, I am still going to. And so our spirit d connected to the divine always is in love with us. And so it's always looking to make that highest level decision, right? Choose yep. this thing over that thing. Choose these people over those people, right? Not from yep. a place that those people are terrible. It's just, I want the highest good for you. Yes. That's it. Yeah. And so again, when we're in alignment with that, we feel good. And it's a real, genuine That's so good. engagement. That's you know so what I mean? Good. Yeah, that's so good. And and I'm, I'm getting this, I'm getting into this word. What's mm. the, what, is, what is the science when you study word? Oh, uh, etymology. Ooh. What's it called? Etymology. Etymology. Yeah. Oh man, that's the not to be confused with entomology, which was a class I had at UC Davis where we had to dissect bugs. <laughs> etymology, right? So not that one, good. Not I that one. Somewhere it might have been you. It might have been uh, on YouTube. But even the breakdown of self confidence, right? Mm. Yes, self exactly. Yeah. Self confide. Yes. Right? Yes. It's the lies you tell yourself. Yes. Right? And, and what you're willing to be honest with yourself about yeah right and like you said myron golden shout out myron golden yeah 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 so, oh yeah. that's what it was yeah myron golden and so if, when, when you when you do that when you have like self-honesty mm. right and the erosion of self-confidence comes from the fact that like you said there's this friction between your your highest self yeah and your current self mm -hmm. and when they're not aligned when you're doing actions that are not aligned with that version of you you feel discomfort, like physical dis discomfort sometimes, right? Literally, oftentimes. Yeah. yeah. And so it boils down to the lies that you are confiding in yourself and breaking these these, these truths, these these commitments, these promises that you are going against is what erodes that confidence. Yeah. That's where it comes from, right? So self confidence comes from being in alignment with what your spirit and highest self tells you it wants you to do and you agree to. Yeah. Your higher self and you, your soul, agree to that. Yeah. And every day you break that promise. Yeah. Right? It's like a kid, like you said, like a kid, right? Like 
your kid knows. I mean, it's it's funny you say that because I thought I think about it now. And I've had kids tell me this, right? Um, that part of part of why they like me as a coach or mentor is that I am restrictive, right? My kids is literal, but kids I just mentor or coach, it's more um, just situational, right? But I'm more restrictive in the things I'll, I'll let them get away with mm. in practice or the weight room or in life, if I yeah. do like a life lesson. And because of that, they know I love them. Wow. I've had kids tell me that. Right? Because you're more restrictive in that, right? And the promises you make me make to myself, I have to keep in your presence. I know you love me. Right? So same as, same as a kid, right? The more, in the beginning, they're mad because you won't let them have candy or won't let them curse or won't let them stay up late watching. But then in the long run, like, damn, my dad loved me. Yeah. And he was willing to, to put me through that. So it's the same. If, if we don't do that, there's this discourse in our gut that, and again, that, that even feeds, that even feeds the portion of our body and, lot, and mind and spirit that are not in congruence because then we do things to quiet and quell this this relationship between our higher self and our current self by f eating food, by laying mm. in bed, by by watching st stuff we shouldn't watch, by being around people we shouldn't be around, and it just gets worse and worse. You have given us the perfect segue. This is why you just let source do source and you carry out the rest. You've literally given us the exact segue necessary into, again, then why do we actually eat, right? Yes. So, because we're not eating for the sake of nutrition, for the sake of optimization, right? Because even for me, I've now come to a place of realization. It's like, look, you can eat certain things. So, let's say fruits off a tree. And uh, it's crazy. When, when you start to accept truth and just go along with truth, you start to see that people you thought were crazy as hell. I know, right? In your past, were right. People like Unk. But there was a dude from my college, uh, West Valley. I was there for maybe a year or so if I dropped out. Uh, <laughs> shout out to the three JCs I dropped out of. So this dude was the most yacked. <laughs> like we were the same height and he was probably like two or three times my weight in just Incredible. muscle mass. Just yeah. yacked. I'm talking shoulders to the, to the umph, right? That's crazy. And this dude right here used to piss me off because... I was a vegan at the time. Yeah. And he would refuse to eat fruits and vegetables. Yeah. 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 You're like, dude, man, <laughs> I, you, know, you, you unhealthy. <laughs> I used to get on his aces around this. I used to think this dude was out of his mind because, again, ideologically, I thought I was right and everybody else was wrong, right? Yeah, Shout yeah. out to that religious programming. Uh, <laughs> I believe that this guy right here was out of his daggone mind, but yet his results didn't lie. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's why I couldn't really go into a heavy debate with him because at the end of the day, he could just flex. Yeah. And my argument's done. Yeah. Because I'm about, you know, I'm about a, a, a hundred pounds soaking wet and he's about <laughs> right. 250, same size. Right. <laughs> so, so for me looking back now, this guy, so what did he eat? Well, he ate meat. That's what he ate, right? Eggs, yep. meat, maybe cheese here and there, whatever it was, right? I would never see him with a sandwich. I never saw him with the with the hot dogs, a cupcake. Like if he was eating a hot dog, he was eating the the sausage, right? Yeah. So looking back now, where I am in my own physiology journey, and I started seeing that again, meat just agreed with me better. I started cutting certain things out and then adding things in and seeing no, these things have disrupted me. Things I thought were healthy before, I started yeah. realizing were actually having certain effects, and I was blaming other things, and so I started to become a scientist of my own body. Yeah. And basically came to this point where I realized, oh, my goodness, like, you know, these animal products are the most bioavailable, et cetera, et cetera. Start listening to the science behind it. Yeah. And it all agrees. Right. And then start listening to, well, botany actually has always stated that, you know, most of these plants are poisonous and trying to kill you. Yeah. Right. But we're able to get certain nutrients if necessary and certain foods are starvation foods. Even my knowledge of history. I know right. that bread was used for the peasants as a way as a sedative like alcohol yeah. was and hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. To kind of get the masses to obey, etc. I start getting myself informed using my own personal anecdotal, etc. Just as much as uh, over um, an overall kind of grasp on reality. And at that moment. 
I also had to accept that the reason why I ate a majority of the foods I ate was because I was an addict of food. Yes. Food. Yes. I didn't say unhealthy food. Uh, I said food. Yes. Right? Yes. I was an addict to bread. I was an addict to rice. I was an addict to whatever it was, uh, that the carbohydrates that I was actually getting these sugar spikes from. Yep, yep. Right? Yep, yep. Which but, is a real addiction because it's a, it comes down exactly it's a very real addiction you create insulin resistance etc you can yeah, ask exactly. any doctor worth their salt and they will tell you uh all pun intended worth their salt <laughs> and they'll tell you that <laughs> bread and a, a bowl of cereal or a bowl of sugar is the same thing to the body talk, talk to him man like <laughs> talk, to him. talk to him dog it breaks <laughs> down the same way in your body Period. And you've been glucose. saying this. The you've been glucose. saying this exactly. for a whole generation. You've yes. been saying this been forever, for, man. for a little generation. How do you eat M&M? Same way you eat bread, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same way. Same way you eat pasta. Yeah. Same way you eat that rice, the brown yeah. one too. Like, so, yeah, man. so for me, I started realizing this thing of optimization, et cetera, brought me to the deeper question of like, why do I? Why do I do certain things? Why do I eat? Why do I listen to certain things? Why, and right now I'm in this, I guess most people call it a digital detox. You know, I'm not on social internet, et cetera, right? Even this podcast, I won't know how it does until August 8th. Right. So I won't even know if it's posted. Hopefully it does. I just trust Premier <laughs> Pro to do his job to, to post it. So... <laughs> I'm in a place where I'm weaning myself from these things that I have used as crutches in my life, mm -hmm. getting down to the bottom. And even when I start having those yearnings, because I've already felt the cravings for, you know, to check something on the Internet or just yeah. to validate something. And I realize, OK, why do I actually go to my phone? OK, uh, I check analytics because on the surface, I say it's for business aspects, right? It's for growth, yeah. but really yeah. it's for validation. So the reason I'm eating the analytics or I'm consuming the social media is for validation. Let's be real yeah. in, in its different forms, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that person, they're posting booty pics, so they must be looking for more validation. That's not how that works. Sugar, sugar, right? <laughs> so, oh, I love that. I love it. Yeah. You feel me? Ooh. <laughs> that, that was for you personally. Oh, man. I see you, you went somewhere with that one, dog. That, 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 that's a connection. I didn't see coming, dog, but it's totally true, right? How is that different than you posting all your spiritual stuff? You want the same thing? Period. Like, like Period. Right? Yeah. That's, that's, Scrolling through the comments. Yeah. It don't yeah. matter if the comments are, 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 are thirst emojis right. or if they're praying right. hands. Right. So right. now, now I'll say hmm. this now for those who saw that video or that portion and want to get on me, I'll, I'll tell you this, right? I'm not saying that, that on the surface level, mm. they're the same mm. posting, you know, Bible yeah. scriptures versus what I am saying is, is, is like, like Aquarius is saying is that we have to, we have to look at things right and and, and self-confide and understand why we're doing things exactly and you and you know more not not you you who, who who just like start typing on your on your keyboard to get at me you know <laughs> more than i do whether or not you have that addiction towards seeing who liked your bible strip scripture uh oh <laughs> and it might be and if i'm being honest it might be greater than the girl who's who yes <laughs> on it might be you might have a greater need that you're trying to feel with right <laughs> which is not good or bad it's just something that we have to observe so yeah your point i'll get into it real fast but i've always said you know there's two two more bobbyisms mm. and what's cool about this is that you know people who are who go to my funeral are required to say a bobbyism before it's going to be in about uh 55 years so y'all gonna have yeah, to oh, wait. easily easily y'all have to wait uh but there's two right purpose versus pleasure mm. Right? right, so everything not only and so I it, that that term came about from eating from 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 my eating eating teachings, and I and I tell people everything you eat is for purpose or pleasure. Wow! Period. Wow! Period. Wow! Right, both both physically and more importantly psychologically. So I'm okay if you think eating chocolate, yeah, for whatever reason you read somewhere or you. If you're so that's that, that's the that's the psych part of it. I'm okay if you're not there yet physically or or, or physio physiologically, how things happen in the body. Mm. But if we're being honest, very very seldom can you even justify that this thing 
you're eating is for purpose. <laughs> right? Very seldom. So if you're not doing that, it's for purpose, it's for pleasure. Yeah. There's only two options. Yeah. Right? And wow. I and I, I, I and I and so the, the, the next step to that to that saying is I ran into a lady one time, I was in I was in I was in the store and they had these um these ten for ten sardines. Mm. Ten for ten, like the best deal ever. Wait, one, one, ten dollars for ten cans? Ten of them, ten cans. What they got and this they, at? They, they still do it. I see it all the time. So I need that. I they need go to the store, water. yeah, and, and once a month you'll see at, at most stores there's like a ten for ten deal on sardines, right? Because very few people love sardines. Uh, I guess I don't know why. I mean, I'm guessing, guys, yeah. but I I like them. I love them. Um, I put them with a little, with a little egg, a little, little mayo, and then put it on some whole grain bread or just on, on salad, lettuce. Anyhow, so in my in my little basket, I had like 20 of these sardines. Uh -huh. And this, this older woman came came by, and she wanted something on the shelf, but it's, it was higher. And so she's like, yeah, sir, can you help me get this off the shelf? I'm like, sure. So I reached up and got whatever she wanted and gave it to her. And then she saw my basket. Mm. And she was like, oh, my God, these sardines, those are so gross. <laughs> now, again, I like sardines. Yep. I would eat them even if I didn't love them because they're yep. so nutrient-dense, yeah. all fat and protein, right? Mm -hmm. Easy, quick, take wherever you want, you know, you can, on, on the go. It's, it's, it's maybe the best portable food there is. Wow. Besides, like, boiled eggs or nuts yep. or whatever. So, guys are watching, that's, that, that's a good go-to for portability. Now, it stinks, so if you have somebody's house, make sure you go outside and throw it away because they'll be mad at you, right? But, so, I was in a mood for some reason. I was, I was in one, one of those feisty moods. So, my comeback to her was, ma'am, <laughs> if you eat whatever you want, you will never look like you want. If you always eat what you want, you will never look like you want. And the point of that was the same thing, right? Purpose and pleasure, right? People who look fit don't always eat what they want. Mm. People who are successful in life, right, don't always eat in their brain what they want, right? I don't always, I don't always feed my my spirit and my brain what it wants because mm. it wants to watch porn mm. and read crap and mm. watch old comedy shows and lay in bed and sleep. And my brain, like every other male on this, on the earth, has the same desires. Yeah. But I don't always feed it that. Right? In fact, now that I'm older and, and wiser, I very seldom feed it that. Yeah. So because of that, my spirit and my brain produces a healthier looking, from that standpoint, individual. Correct. So going back to, again, you know, we're trying to give you guys knowledge in terms of, of the, everything. This is all, we're all just beings inside of a body. Yeah. And if you understand how the, how the universe is constructed, you realize more and more how everything is kind of the same thing. Absolutely. So we said eat. You know, why do we eat how we eat? But we mean not just food. We mean spiritual food. We mm -hmm. mean mental food. All, mm -hmm. And it's all the same thing. Absolutely. So if you, if you, so, so there's two pieces on top of those, that, those two stories. And I'll, I'll let you talk. Sorry, Aquarius. Nah, no, um, never, never. We're here. But I ain't sharp enough. Like the, the takeaway, like the assignment for everyone watching. Like here's your assignment. Is physically, fitness wise. There's two steps. Spiritual, growth-wise, two steps. Mental, academics, your business, two steps. Number one, what do I want? Mm. Right? My five steps to greatness is the same first step. Mm. What do I want? Right? Do I want to be lean? Mm. Do I want to be muscular? Do I want to have nice quads? Do I want to have big biceps? Do I want to be a millionaire? Do I want whatever? Number two, very simple. Right? What do I need to eat? And how do I need to eat to get there? That's so good. Right? So then the third step is very simple. That's so good. Right? How do I minimize the times I'm not eating things that were in step two? Mm. And how do I maximize the times I am digesting things that are in step two? So when I understood that the muscles don't need meat, the muscles don't need chicken, 
the mm-hmm. muscles need amino acids, mm-hmm. which is the breakdown of meat and chicken, right? I don't need, my body doesn't need, my body needs energy, mm-hmm. but my body does not need glucose energy, right? So what can I give it besides glucose energy, mm-hmm. ketone energy? So now, how do you fast, coach? Well, I fast, but I don't fast in, in a way that jeopardizes my muscle. Mm. So amino acids in the morning, mm. ketones in the morning, give me energy without glucose. Aminos protect the muscles. Mm. Now, if I didn't want to build muscles, but still wanted to fast every day from a health standpoint, I could do that. But yeah. the want was different. Yeah. Right? So because we as a society, men especially, we desire certain physiological uh, aesthetics, right? That's different than what our ancestors had to deal with. Like they didn't want big biceps and, and nice abs. They, they need so yes, yeah, so yes, they they ate, they ate infrequently. Yeah, but they wanted to have. They didn't want to have nice abs. Mm. So now I'm combining those two. I want I want to be able to eat like a beast, mm. right? But still give my body what it needs to have the uh, the aesthetics that I want. Hmm. Right. So. Step one, what do you want? I want muscles. Yeah. Step two, what does, that, what does that mean? What do you need? I need to have amino acids, not protein. Protein breaks down to amino acids. I need to have energy to work out. I don't want glucose. I don't want to store body fat. All right, so now what methodology, what strategy, what foods get me to maximize the time I spend giving my body step two? Mm. So what's that? Once you, do, once you understand that, then it's easy. It's literally, and, and people are, it, huh? It's literally inputs at that level. Yeah, exactly. So, so my amino acids that I take, it's what time is it? It's two thirty. Yeah. I've had no food today. At all. Right. Normally, I would have a, a and, and no aminos at no. all. I would have some bulletproof coffee with some fat in it, and I had some keto pills earlier today. And so again, everybody- and again, it's just so wild to me that the cognitive dissonance that we take ourselves into in order to justify where we are or to validate the limiting beliefs that have been fed into us because somebody is still listening to you and they want the physique you want exactly and yet they're still saying in their head but yeah you know what i'm saying yeah and again that was me so i'm i'm speaking from a and it's still me in other areas right me perspective absolutely so I, i i wanted to to deep into a few things here because it's, you know, universal principle is something that I like to go back and forth. Well, not back and forth, but really dwell in this state as much as I can, but to bring understanding and clarity around everything for me and then use this frame of reference and talking to anybody else. So yeah. there are certain universal laws that just are. It's not like human laws that can change a little bit or just because that judges in, they go against no yeah, yeah, universal yeah, principles. Yeah. Like the best one I can use, the simplest one is gravity, right? Mm-hmm. There is not a moment in time where gravity gave a damn about whether or not you acknowledged it, whether or not you knew its its rules, right? Yep. And its construct, etc. Yet it impacts every single waking and non-waking moment of your and yep. everybody else's life. It doesn't care about anything. And so... In order for you to have the best life possible, it is best for you to know these universal principles that are working for you against you. So I wanted, I'm just using that as a framework, but I want to take a step back. And you said, you know, these propensities that we have towards, you know, let's say things that don't necessarily feed us um, in a productive way or things that aren't necessarily constructive for us, right? Mm -hmm. When we're born, we have no program. We have no identity. We just are. Just are. We begin to create our proclivities and our propensities and our attitudes, our demeanors, our personalities, etc., based off of the environment that we're in. So, and this is, and it's so powerful for me now because it's the most liberating truth for me when it comes to like programming and subconscious beliefs, et cetera, right? It really demystified the whole thing for me. And it's inputs, outputs, like we're talking about with right. the body, it's the very same with the mind, right? So when I was born, I didn't have a proclivity towards negative news. 
I was programmed into having that appetite for it. Right. So right. I wasn't born with an appetite for sugar or I wasn't created and constructed for an appetite for sucrose in the way that we know it. Yep. Right. Again, yep. my body had certain ways of metabolizing. My body had certain ways or certain um, certain chemicals that it needed in order to function. Right? right. So you talked about the aminos. OK, it needs production of proteins. Um, you know, we talk about fats because it needs, you know, certain ways to function and lubricate, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So my body knew the building blocks and the foundations. But as soon as I was introduced to Gerber, now I have an appetite That's for right. sucrose, for that sugar That's specifically, right. right? And so most of us have this belief where it's like, man, I just have these unbreakable cravings. No, you have a habit formation right. that has brought you to this proclivity. Because even right. at this point, only maybe three or four, well, four weeks in officially, I now have no cravings for carbs. Yeah. And I ate carbs for 27 years. Yeah. So, and this is the first time I can, like, literally, I, I have no desire for it. Yeah. Right? Exogenous carbohydrates, at least, because the body produces right. its own, right? Right, 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 so, exactly. So, I'm in a place where I'm now looking at my life like, wait, what the hell? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, you're wait, telling wait, me wait, that wait, wait, wait. you tell me yeah. that it's not just a natural and organic part of me just to crave sugar? No, it's not. Yeah. That was taught. Yeah. That was built into you. So it's actually showing me again, if you give your body the optimal, the best quality of whatever it is, it's going to naturally gravitate towards that. Once I start to feed it that thing, right? Yep. So again, for the person who's saying, but you just don't understand, I have this craving, I have this addiction, it's like, bro. And I'm a testament to this. There was a day yeah. when I was a drug addict for six yeah. years, and the next day, I never took a drug again. Right, right. How can you describe that? Well, maybe you're different. Okay, go look up all the people that that has happened to, the identity yeah. shift, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, this is also going to segue into you know our solution-oriented. But I wanted to point at this specifically because there is, again, there's this this romanticization or this obsession with like how hard something has to be. And even when you said the things that we don't want to do, the only reason we don't want to do them is because we're just programmed out of them. Right. There's a kid right. who they were raised, you know, working out as an Olympian all their life. And they yeah. do the type of workouts that'll make you throw up if you just thought about it. Right. But they enjoy it at a visceral level. They can yeah. only get enjoyment from yeah. those workouts. Right. And I would actually, uh, this is a theory but it, to, to the rest of the world, but to me it's truth. I would argue that we actually have more of a proclivity towards the positive. Otherwise, we wouldn't feel negative emotions when we did that's the true. other shit. That's true. Why would you have a negative response that's true. That's true. to yeah. something that's meant to be in your body? That's true. Why yeah. would I swell up and feel inflammation if a yeah. part of me is indifferent about carbohydrates? No. Yeah. No, that's not indifference. That's showing me that that's not supposed to be in my body, that my body's rejecting it. Right. That's what that is. That's, I mean, and, and the, hard, the harder part to me. This episode of the DNA of Greatness podcast is brought to you by the BTY Symposium. The BTY Symposium is an immersive workshop aimed at getting the student athletes the tools they need to achieve their ultimate dreams. Whether a one-day or multiple-day format, the symposiums provide an all-inclusive environment that nourishes athletes physically, mentally, and emotionally. Now back to the show. And and this could be this is helpful for everybody, whether it's physical or whether it's um, just in your life progress. Like you know, just like we we stated earlier that everybody wants at some level to be healthier and fit. Right. We all also at some level want to be successful. Yep. However, we deem that to be. Right. It might be money. It might be status. It might be, you know, getting out of your, you know, your your mom's basement. <laughs> yep. You know, it might be, it might be getting out of this relationship. It might be football. You know, getting a football scholarship. We all it might be a, you know YouTuber. Whatever it is, we we we're naturally driven again, survival, procreation wires our brain to want to be better, mm -hmm. right? The idea of better changes based on history and generations and, and location, but we still want that, right? Uh, so then it comes down to, in our current environment, 
what things are we doing sociologically that get in the way, mm. right? And just like you mentioned the fact that like we don't what do you, we don't our bodies don't need sugar. Mm-hmm. We 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 were introduced to it. Our brains kind of got wired by, by it, and now we're addicted, right? Just like that, I I I know that we need to understand the social construct and hold that the connection between that vice or that thing we're doing has on our idea of what pleasure is. Absolutely, that's holding us. Right? I always say like like the only reason. Many people think they can't drink anymore because they associate drinking with so many things they love doing. Yeah. Like, like because you, you know, you associate drinking with watching sports and you love sports, you can't see yourself not drinking. Mm -hmm. Because you associate drinking with that Thursday night with your girlfriends, you can't envision stopping drinking because you associate pleasure with the event. Right, so if I if I said yeah, the, the girls would still be there. We're yeah. still doing book club. Yeah, we're just ha- having Seven Eleven instead of wine. Yeah, right. What's the difference? The difference is you associated pleasure mm. with the liquor. Yeah, those two together, right? So I That's was at so this good. this thing yesterday for for the Fourth of July, and I lo- you know I I love people, but I'm I'm becoming more and more anxious. Mm. And and part of it's my, you know me and where I'm at in my life. I'm, I'm trying to really you know do things, and I'm working on that part of me. But as it currently sits, things that are not feeding me spiritually, emotionally, um, toward my my dream of making a difference in this world, they give me anxiety, mm. like a physical, you know, palpable anxiety. Right, where I feel sick almost. Um, and I realized in a moment that. Whenever I'm doing things that I used to associate with downtime or enjoyment that I now realize was was just a crutch for me, hmm. I feel dissonance, right? So now it's a matter of the same way I still eat carbs, the same way I still eat pizza and, and whatever, I can fragment that and separate that and say, you know what, I realize that I'm eating pizza for pleasure. Mm. But I'm minimizing when I do that because I don't associate the time with my family with having to be with pizza. Yes. Now I can add pizza to it. Yeah. Occasionally, but I've separated the connection between enjoyment, real enjoyment that my soul and spirit needs, and the things I've associated with that enjoyment. And so the same is happening in, in my spiritual journey, in my in my career. And my and my journey towards self uh, actualization, I'm realizing that many things that I used to think were necessary um, are not necessary, or even or even or even part of what I need to be fed to grow. And so, it, because I enjoy those things on occasion, I can still eat those things mm. or digest those things, but. When, when I'm just doing it to do it, I can feel the difference. Like, yeah, it just don't why feel the same. Why am, I, why am I hanging out just talking about people? Why? I, don't, yeah. I mean, why am I doing this? Yeah. And so I, I'm, so I'm noticing that 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 part of my life, physical fitness wise, is now morphing into my other stuff, and I, I welcome it because I know that's gonna it's gonna make me detox all the stuff that I don't need to be partaking in. That's well, I'm not saying I'll never, I'll never gossip again, or I'll never mm. just sit at at the poolside and have a hamburger with my boys again. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm gonna eat a lot less of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna eat a lot, yeah. a lot less of that stuff because it ain't helping me. Exactly. In fact, I, I I literally felt sick yesterday. So, and I really want to. Then this is like our our um, last leg of the race, and yeah. perfect perfect segue into this is you're afraid of losing them. Yes. Right? Let's talk about yes. it. And I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know, t- tap on this one in two different ways that meant the most to me, but they're also the breakthroughs that got me to a place of like, I'm really in a state of, I don't give a fuck. Right? <laughs> yes. Now, but I used to be what I call the recovering people pleaser. And now I'm the recovered people. Right. Pleaser. And so yeah. a majority of my life was built on the foundation of make everybody around you comfortable. Right. 
that was the mo for me um being raised in a fundamentalist christian household everything was about saving others fixing other people making other people feel you know better about themselves regardless of the detriment or how it may um impact self right yeah. neglect one's own needs etc and so that's the space that i kind of dwelt a majority of my subconscious living my automated or um autopilot living now, ways that this showed up in the most drastic ways was, again, number one, as an addict, I quickly came to realize after I had, you know, gone through this addiction, come out on the other side, cold turkey, that I was more addicted to the people, right, and what they meant for me because they were identifiers for me. So I was more addicted to the identity yeah. of who I was than yeah. I was to the actual substances. A lot yeah. of substances I actually didn't like. Wow. There were one or wow. two that, yeah, for real. There were one or two that I was like, actually, like, it was just the drug for me and I could, with nobody else. But everything else, I was like, okay, this is going to connect me with my boys. Yeah. Right? So yeah. there was that for me. And I know it seems dramatic when it's drugs, but it's the exact same thing when it's the drug of food or it's the drug of, you know, sex and it's the drug of, you know, um, uh, finding your worth through your workplace, yeah, whatever yeah. it may be, right? We're good, we're good. Or, or yeah, complaining, exactly. or complaining yeah. about work, Complain right? Gossip the gossip girls, girls yeah, well, yeah, like the yeah. gossip boys, whatever it is. There's a that's that's still a chemical addiction that you have, you know. That's like Unc was saying, is connotated to these people. And so, you know, after this, obviously, it took me some some self reflection, some growth, some healing to get to a place where I started realizing it in every aspect of my life. Where the reason, okay, I know the power of the tongue. Right. I've known yeah. it for almost all my life, biblically first. Right. But when I came to fully internalize this, when I started learning about the laws of vibration, right, the universal law of attraction, etc. And I started realizing, man, my word is powerful. And I started making the connection in when I would say things and things would happen. And, you know, when I you know, would speak certain ways and my life would turn out certain ways, etc. And so I would change my word around me. Yeah. Because it was easy. But as soon as I got into groups of people, I was now speaking against my own good. So I get in a group of people and let's say I've been speaking abundance over my life. I get in this group of people and all of a sudden they're speaking about how terrible the economy is, how everything's going to shit, how nothing is ever working out, et cetera, et cetera. All of a sudden I find myself trying to make everybody comfortable yep, by staying yep. in that same discourse, even though I'm doing something different. And I feel like it's no different than, you know... The, the, the chick who's hanging out with her friends and talking uh, all this all these skinny girls at this, skinny girls at that, but at the house is actually trying to become one of them skinny girls. And so she's actually yeah. going against her own good. I, I love how you articulate this certain point. And so this is really just a, a, an alley-oop for you uh, to kind of close us off with this. Mm -hmm. This very real truth that I think is actually the biggest bottleneck for most people is you know what you want now. You know where you're going but you're addicted to these people around you who are in the opposite direction of what you want. Yeah, and that's and that is the beauty of this is and and I have I have I have four boys, four boys. I have one son, one boy, mm -hmm. but I have my, I have my four boys that I go back 30 years with from college. Mm -hmm. And we all have our own life story. And we all love each other. Right, and we all have avenues and, and lanes in which we we excel in. And so, what I've understood, and what they understand from me, which is which has allowed me to kind of expand this thought, is that I don't need for them, number one, to be fit. Mm. Right, I don't need for them. I love them unconditionally, all of them, and they're not fit. I mean, some, you know, a few of them, you know, do some some stuff. They're all still athletes. They still we still play basketball. We have one boy still playing football. Bless his heart, still dominating. Uh, but I don't need for them to be working out and having and fasting to love them, yeah. right? But more importantly, they've allowed me to not need them to accept that I do hmm. want to be fit. Wow. Right. One of my sayings a long time ago. I got on people. Uh, my, my son's football team parents they were all giving me a hard time about being fit and wearing, wearing a tank top you know all the time I was like damn I live in Gilroy it's 105 degrees man I'm like, yeah I'm wearing a tank top get mad at me because you ain't wearing a tank top that part you can't wear a tank top <laughs> you know what I mean get mad at me but I, one day it came to like I was really mad I went on social media mm. and, and just like blanket statement I said look uh, to this effect I said look I don't I don't I don't 
I don't judge you for not caring about being fit. Yeah. Right? Don't judge me because I do. Wow. Right? So what I understand now is that like in every avenue, there's 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 areas that where, where people are, are doing better than me. Mm. And I'm sure they would not want me to come in their environment and 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 disrupt the production to getting somewhere in their lane. Mm. Right? So what I've learned to your point is I've learned that I can love people and and love myself at the same time. And that it requires work that I make it clear to people around me that these these foods or these things in a spiritual emotional sense don't feed me. Mm. And I and I don't I won't eat it. And I, and and I won't eat it for sure as often as you eat it. Mm. So um, I make a practice to purposely walk away from situations like and this is I mean I mean like minimal like micro situations. Yeah. Like I, I'm I'm at football practice and there's a break you know in practice. All the coaches on my staff know if I walk away to just drink my my ketones and eat my nuts or whatever. It's not personal. Yeah. And they love me for that. They, they know that I'm not sitting there and just talking about whatever. Yeah. Right? So my boys get it, you know, and people around me understand that if I just leave this this conversation, it's because I'm trying to feed myself in this arena. Now, now you may have, and many times it's, it's true, they may be doing things and to them, they need this. That's fine. But right now, this is not feeding me. I've had what I needed to eat mm-hmm. <laughs> from this conversation or this environment, and now I've, I've had enough. If I, if I eat any more, I'm going to get sick. Yeah. Like physically sick. Yeah. And once you tell people, you know, the, the, the diet you're on, the, the way you consume stuff mm. and make it known, they begin to get it. Right? My boys don't ask me to eat at noon because I, I don't eat till 3. Mm. The same way my social environments, they know there's certain things that I, I just don't partake in. Yeah, like conversation wise, whatever wise, BS wise, and so it, it it can be uncomfortable. But like you said, you have to do you, boo. Yeah, you got to do you. You got to take care of your of your of your emotional and physical state. And I think the reason why you prosper and you like you dominate in that space internally, externally, is because you respect your own boundary. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up. A lot of us may get hung up in different places where we say, okay, I'm eating this way now. And we tell everybody and we announce it. And then they're still offering you the bullshit because they're still eating or entertaining it, right? Yeah. Where it's like you've come to a place where people actually respect you ironically. Because at first people are going to test you. That's crazy. That's a good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people are going to test you because it's natural. Because it's like, okay, yeah, we've all said things like this to ourselves even yeah. sometimes to other people, you know, go ahead and eat this thing. But when you show them time and time again, it's like me with, you know, alcohol and drink, uh, you know, smoking, et cetera. People know, like, don't even bring that around tea. Not because I tell them don't, but then yeah. it's like, he's not about that. Exactly, and it exactly. almost has an impact on them. Like, yeah. bro, like it probably wouldn't be best. Or you actually even start to become an inspiration to those people. Absolutely. Your own promise. I was going to say that. Yeah, absolutely. Because we all, we all, again, we, we're, we're all internally... Our, our our compass is pointing to north for all of yeah, us. Exactly. We all want better. Exactly. And we and, and we all find ways to screw it up. Yeah. Including Coach Bobby. So yeah. I'm not sitting there saying, "Well, I never I never deviate from north. I'm always north, north, north. Whatever I do, no." But we all kind of want to go there. So when someone sees something or someone that 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 is pointed north in a in the area of their lives. They it inspires them because mm-hmm. at least in some parts of their life they're not like that. Like yeah. with us, with people who are who are pointed so far north, it never moves in their financial strategy, yeah, or their relationships or their spiritual journey. Yeah, like when we see that, we're like damn, I fools. yeah. And they might be overweight. They might be what you know in, in, in a divorce or so other areas. They're not pointed north, but in this in this area, yeah. we're inspired they because in. we want to be that way. In, in in an area of our life that we're not yet, mm. and so and so you're right. I find people, even even after like only one or two instances, 
they just get it. Like yeah. they, 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 they let me be by myself. Yeah. Right. They don't, they don't, they don't give me a hard time about it. And it's just like, because they know that, wow, that's kind of cool that he set boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm going to respect that. You know what I mean? So you're right. That's so powerful. So, you know, my closing statement really is this, is at the end of the day, just like your physical plate, your mental, your emotional, psychological plate, you always choose what goes on that plate and what goes in. Like, that's the beauty that's right. of this life. That's what true free will is. That's what true personal power is, is the ability to decide. You have a choice at any given moment. Now, if you're making decisions right now that are not serving your highest interest and your highest good, it's not time to beat yourself up and shame yourself. That's only right. adding more insult to injury. But instead, to start looking at, as Coach you know, uh, highlights in his, in his five steps to greatness, is what is it that you truly want in your life? You know, like, you know, I believe today's episode can be dedicated just to want because that yeah. desire, that deep rooted desire that you first start to cultivate or you start to uncover, really, is going to become that North Star for you. Right. And when you can be honest with yourself about that, I believe that is liberation and freedom. Like, don't don't cap yourself because of what you think your auntie, your sister, yeah. your daddy, your mama, your whoever is going to think about it. If it is the Lambo right now and that's what inspired, then let it be the Lambo. But it is. That's what it let is, it exactly. That. Yeah. If it's a six pack abs, let it be that. Because yeah. in the journey of going towards that, you're going to discover so much about yourself. Yep. You know, so again, my, my closing statement is really about uncover what it is you truly desire, and that thing is going to start to kind of narrow things in for you and create that direction for you. Right. And it's evolving. It's mm. evolving, right? So I'm gonna flex for each one of them, right? That so works. back to my three steps. In this, I, I, would, I know, I know, you have a lot, Coach Bobby. So, in this, in this particular <laughs> episode, I mentioned three things, right, as it relates to what we eat, mm. right. And as Aquarius said, step one, bow, right. You have to, you have to be unapologetic about what you want. Yeah. Right. Physically, do you want abs? Do you want to be fifty pounds lighter? Do you want to be buff? Do you want to be? Do you want to squat a certain way? Do you want to be lean? Whatever it is. Be unapologetic. If it's mental, I, you know, I want to have my, my peace. If it's financial, I want to be a millionaire. Right? Be, have what you want. Be clear in your head and be unapologetic. Mm -hmm. Right? Step two is where, is where most of the episode today was focused on. Right? Figure out what you have to eat in order to get that. Mm -hmm. Right? Physically, what's the diet? What, you know, what's the parameters of, of carbs, protein, Fats, whatever. Figure out what it is, and and that part can be evolving over time. Yeah. Right. As you learn more and grow more, but at any point in time, you have an idea of what you think you need in order to make step one, right, a reality. Mm. Right. What do you need to eat physically, uh, spiritually, and emotionally to become a millionaire? To, yeah. to to get a scholarship academically. To get you know to get your degree. Right. What do you need to eat and partake in? Right. And then it's very simple. Step three is the easiest part. Once you have one and two, step three is figuring out, right, and, and removing as much time and energy spent on eating things that do not fit step two. Mm. Right? And that's the, and that's the part that, that requires some, some self-confidence, some self-confiding. Mm. Because oftentimes you'll discover you eat, eat all kind of bad crap. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Physically, mentally, spiritually, yeah. that you you you've identified don't help you with step two, yeah. which makes step one possible. So you know that over car overeating carbs, right, is not what you need. You know not eating enough protein mm. is not what you need to get step one, which is the hard rock abs and nice biceps, and yet you continue to do it. Mm. So one is you know, say what you want, be affirmative. Figure out what to eat to get that, and then stop eating the stuff you don't need that you identified in step two, and that's it. Game changer. They say success yeah. is not the things you're doing, but instead the things that you, or they say it's not the things you're not doing, but it's the things you're doing that you're probably supposed to not be doing. Yeah. If exactly. you just get some things out the way, you become successful as opposed to adding all this extra stuff on. I mean, it's just, it's just so too real. much eating of the wrong stuff. Oh. And there y'all yeah, have it, folks. There y'all yep. have it. Why do we yep. eat? I believe this right here, this episode is going to be 
whether it's right now or sometime in the near future, it's going to be clipped up into viral clips everywhere. Like, I can feel it in my spirit. I already know. So we appreciate you guys for joining us for this episode. Make sure to stay tuned in. We know we made some references to past episodes. So when you get a chance, make sure to completely absorb what we're talking about. And then you might come back and this might even be just a new level of revelation after getting those fundamental concepts and ideas. But for right now, much love to you guys. We will see you in the next one. Love you guys. Peace. Be it now and then it will come to you. You can't wait till you get it to become that thing.